Now what happens when you take the limit with some sort of absolute value in your function? Well, let's try all the steps. Step one, plug it in. You got zero over zero. That's not going to work. How about step two, algebra gymnastics? Well, it is possible to rewrite the absolute value as a piecewise function from both the left-hand side of two and the right-hand side of two, but that's way too complicated and there's a much easier way to do it, so we're going to skip that step as well. And if you do that, you go into step three, where you assume that you have a vertical asymptote, and it turns out this is not a vertical asymptote. So it turns out that absolute value limits kind of fall outside of the three-step rule. But that's okay, because the analysis of absolute value limits is extremely similar to that of vertical asymptote analysis. So, let's take a look at how we do this following problem. The limit as x approaches 2 of the absolute value of x minus 2 over just x minus 2. To get a feel for what's happening here, let's plug in some numbers. For example, how about x equals 5? On top, you get 3. On the bottom, you get 3. That's 1. Okay. How about x equals 10? On the top, you get 8. On the bottom, you get 8. That's 1. We know what happens at 0. Let's try some negative numbers. How about negative 5? On the top, you get positive 7. On the bottom, you get negative 7. Positive 7 over negative 7, that's negative 1. Turns out x minus 2 over x minus 2 is 1. The only difference here is that our x minus 2 on top is always going to be positive. And our x minus 2 on bottom, well, it depends. Well, what does it depend on? It depends on what x is. If x is bigger than 2, then your bottom is going to be positive. If x is less than 2, then your bottom is going to be negative. However, it's the same number as what would be on top, as we saw with x equals negative 5. We had the absolute value of negative 7 over negative 7. So here is how we analyze absolute value functions. We're going to look to both at the right-hand side of 2 and the left-hand side of 2, just as we did with vertical asymptotes. If you take a look as we approach, x, uh, as we approach 2 from the left-hand side, of the absolute value of x minus 2 over x minus 2. It doesn't really matter what number you plug in. You can plug in an entire whole number to the left of uh, 2. But to keep this similar and to have to remember less things, let's use our vertical asymptote analysis. Let's look 0.1 to the left of 2. How about uh, 1.9? Well, here we have the absolute value of 1.9 minus 2. Well, 1.9 minus 2, that would be negative 0.1. The absolute value of that is positive 0.1. On the bottom, we have 1.9 minus 2 is negative 0.1. So positive 0.1 over negative 0.1 is just negative 1. Furthermore, if we were to analyze this function the exact same way from the right-hand side of 2, we would find something very similar. Let's try 2.1. The absolute value of 2.1 minus 2 is 0.1 and 2.1 minus 2 on the bottom is 0.1. We have 0.1 over 0.1 and that is 1. So the limit does not exist because the left-hand limit does not equal the right-hand limit. And if you were to graph this function, it looks like this where from the left hand side of 2 our function is negative 1 and approaching negative 1 and then at x equals 2 our function doesn't exist Wolfram Alpha just includes this line in here to let you know that there is some sort of asymptotic nature happening and if we look to the right hand side of 2 our function is positive 1 and this will be the case for most absolute value functions